in this lecture, uh, we will look at a very, very simple yet powerful uh, classification algorithm called the k nearest neighbors. So, uh, let me introduce uh, a k nearest neighbor classification algorithm. It is what is called a non parametric uh, algorithm for classification. Uh, so, let me explain what uh, this uh, non uh, parametric means. Remember, um, when we looked at logistics regression for example, uh, we said um, uh, let us say there is data like this and um, um, we are going to use the train data uh, to develop a hyperplane uh, of this form beta naught plus beta 1 1 x 1 plus beta 1 2 x 2 in the 2D case. And any time a new data point comes, uh, what we do is we use the parameters that have been uh, estimated uh, from the trained data to make predictions about test data. So, remember we had this uh, e power uh, this term divided by 1 plus e power this term right here. So, this function is actually a function of beta naught, beta 1 1 and beta 1 2. So, these are all parameters that have already been derived out of this data and any time a new test data comes in, it is sent through this function and then you make a prediction. So, this is a parametric method because parameters have been derived from the data. K nearest neighbor is a different idea where I do not uh, get parameters like this out of the data. I am going to use the data itself to make classification. So, that is an interesting different idea that uh, one uses in k nearest neighbors. I just want to make sure uh, uh, that we get the um, terminology right. We will later see uh, that the k nearest neighbor there is one parameter that we use for classifying which is the number of neighbors that I am going to look at. Uh, so, I do not want you to wonder uh, since we are using anyway a parameter in this k nearest neighbor, why am I calling it non parametric. Um, so, the distinction here is subtle, but I want you to remember this the number of neighbors that we use in the k nearest neighbor algorithm that you will see later is actually a tuning parameter for the algorithm that is not a parameter that I have derived from the data. Whereas, in logistics regression, these are parameters I can derive only from the data. I cannot uh, say what these values will be a priori. Whereas, I could say I will use a k nearest neighbor with two neighbors, three neighbors and so on. So, that is a tuning parameter. So, I want you to remember the distinction between a tuning parameter and parameters that are derived from the data and the fact that k nearest neighbor is a non parametric method speaks to the fact that we are not deriving any parameters from the data itself. However, we are free to use tuning parameters for k nearest neighbor. So, that is an important thing to remember. It is also called a lazy learning algorithm where all the computation is deferred until classification. So, uh, what we mean by this is the following. If I give train data for example, for logistics regression, I have to do this work to get these parameters uh, before uh, I can do any classification for a test data point. right? So, without these parameters, I can never classify test data points. However, in k nearest neighbor, you just give me data on a test data point, I will classify. So, we will see how that is done, but no work needs to be done before I uh, am able to classify a test data point. So, that is another important dif difference between k nearest neighbor and um, uh, logistic regression for example. It is also called as an instant based learning where the function is approximated locally. So, we will come back to uh, this notion of uh, local as I describe uh, this algorithm. Now, we might ask uh, when do we use this as I uh, started this lecture I mentioned it is the simplest of classification algorithms very easy to implement um, and you will see uh, when I explain the algorithm uh, how simple it is. Uh, there is no explicit training phase uh, and so on and there is no generalization uh, for the training data and all that. It just that I give the data and then I just wait till you give me a new data point uh, to say uh, what, what class it should belong to. Of course, based on the algorithm itself I can also predict for the 
train data points itself what class they should belong to uh, and then maybe compare it with the label that the data point has and so on. Nonetheless, I am not going to explicitly get some parameters out. And when does one use this algorithm? This is a simple algorithm uh, when uh, there are complicated nonlinear decision boundaries. Uh, this algorithm actually works uh, surprisingly well. And uh, when you have large amount of data um, uh, and the train phase can be bogged down uh, by large amount of data in terms of an optimization algorithm and so on, then you can use this. However, a caveat is um, you will see as we um, describe this algorithm, uh, when you have more and more data, uh, the classification of nearest neighbor itself uh, will become uh, complicated. Uh, so, there are um, ways to address this. Uh, but uh, when we say when the amount of data is large, all that we are saying is since there is no explicit training phase, uh, there is no optimization with a large uh, number of data points to be able to identify parameters that are used later in classification. So, in other words, in other algorithms, you will do all the effort a priori and once you have the parameters, then uh, classification uh, becomes on the test data point becomes easier. However, uh, since KNN is a lazy algorithm, all the uh, uh, all the calculations are deferred till you ha actually have to do something. At that point, there might be lot more lot more calculations if the data is large. So the input input features for K na nearest neighbors could be both quantitative and qualitative, and output are typically categorical values, which are what type of class does this data belong to. Now. It is not necessary that we use uh, K nearest neighbor only for classification, uh, though that is where it is used the most. Um, you could also use it with very, very simple uh, uh, extensions or simple uh, definitions for uh, function approximation problems also. And you will see as I describe this algorithm how it could be uh, adapted for function approximation problems quite easily. Nonetheless, as far as this lecture is concerned, um, we are going to say uh, the outputs are categorical values, which basically says uh, different classes and what class does this data point belong to. In one word, uh, if you were to explain uh, K nearest neighbor algorithm, you would simply say K nearest neighbor explains a categorical value using the majority votes of nearest neighbors. So, what basically we are saying is. Um, if uh, there is a particular data point and I want to find out which class uh, this data point belongs to, all I need to do is look at all the neighboring uh, data points and then find which class they belong to and then take a majority vote and that is what is the class that is assigned to this data point. So, it is something like uh, if you want to know a person you know his neighbors, uh, something like that is what is uh, used in. Uh, k nearest neighbors. Now, remember at the beginning uh, of this uh, portion of data science algorithms, I talked about the assumptions uh, uh, that are made uh, by uh, different algorithms. Um, uh, here, uh, for example, because this is a non parametric uh, algorithm, um, we really do not make any assumptions about the underlying data distribution. We are just going to look at the nearest neighbors and then come up with an answer. So, we are not going to assume uh, probability distribution or any other uh, linear separability assumptions and so on. As I mentioned before, this k, uh, the number of neighbors we are going to look at is a tuning parameter and this is something that you select, right. So, you use a tuning parameter, run your algorithm and you get good results, then keep that parameter. If not, you kind of play around with it and then find the best k for your data. The key thing is that because we keep talking about neighbors uh, and from a data science viewpoint, whenever we talk about neighbors, we have to talk about a distance between a data point and its neighbor. Uh, we really need a distance metric for this algorithm to work and this distance metric would basically say how, what is the proximity between any two data points. Uh, the distance metric could be Euclidean distance, Mahalanobis distance, Hamming distance and so on. So, there are several distance metrics that you could use uh, to basically use uh, k nearest neighbor. Uh, 
So, in terms of the algorithm itself, um, it is performed uh, using the following four steps. Nothing is done till the algorithm gets a data point to be classified. Once you get a data point to be classified, uh, let us say I have um, n data points in my database and each has a class label. So, for example, x 1 belongs to class 1, x 2 belongs to class 1, x 3 belongs to class 2 and so on, x n belongs to let us say class 1. So, this is you know a binary uh, situation, binary classification problem. This need not be a binary classification problem. For example, x 2 could belong to class 2 and so on. So, there may be many classes. So, multi class problems are also very, very easy to solve um, using uh, KNN algorithm. So, let us anyway stick to binary uh, problem. Then uh, what you are going to do is let us say I have a new test point which I call it x nu and I want to uh, find out how I classify this. So, the very first step which is what we talk about here is we find a distance between this new uh, test point and each of the labeled data points in, in, in the data set. So, for example, there could be a distance d 1 between x nu and x 1, d 2 between x nu and x 2, d 3 and so on and d n. So, once you calculate this distance, then what you do is you have n distances and this is the reason why we said uh, you need a distance metric uh, right uh, in the last slide for uh, KNN to work. Uh, once we have this distance, then what we do is basically we look at all of these distances and then say I order the di distances from the smallest to the largest. So, let us say if d n is the smallest distance, so d n may be d 5, d 3, um, d 10, uh, whatever it is. So, I order them, this is the smallest to the largest. You can also think of this as closest to the farthest, right? because the distances are all from x nu. So, if the distance is 0, then the point is x nu itself. So, any small distance is the closest to x nu and as you go down, it is farther and farther. Now, the next step is very simple. Uh, if let us say you are looking at k nearest neighbors with k equal to 3, then what you are going to do is you are going to find the first 3 distances in this and this distance is from x n, this distance is from x 5 and this distance is from x 3. So, once we order this according to distance and go from the smallest to largest, uh, once we sort it in this fashion, then we also know what the corresponding data points are. So, this belongs, this is the data point x n. So, this is the distance between x n and x nu, distance between x y and this. So, now I have these three uh, data points that I picked out from the data set. Now, if I want to classify this, all that I do is the following. I find out what class these data points belong to. So, if all of them belong to class 1, then I say x nu is class 1. If all of them belong to class 2, I say x nu is class 2. If two of them belong to class 1 and the third one belongs to class 2, I do a majority vote and still say it is class 1. If two of them belong to class 2 and one belongs to class 1, I say it is class 2. That is it. That is all the algorithm is. So, which says to find the class label that the majority of these k label data points have and assign it to the test data point. Very simple, right. Now, I also said this algorithm with minor modifications can be used for function approximation. So, for example, if you so choose to, uh, you could take this uh, and then let us say if you want to predict what an output will be uh, for a new point, you could find the output value for these three points and take an average, for example, very trivial and then say that is the output corresponding to this. So, that becomes uh, adaptation of this for function approximation problems and so on. Nonetheless, for classification, this is the basic idea. Now, if you said okay, k is equal to 5, then what you do is you go down to 5 numbers and then do the majority voting. So, that is all uh, we do. So, let us look at this um, uh, very uh, simple uh, idea here. 
let us say uh, this is actually the training data itself um, and then I want to look at k equal to 3 and then see what the labels will be uh, for the training data itself. Uh, the blue are actually labeled, so this is supervised, right. So the blue are all belonging to class 1 and the red is all belonging to class 2 and then let us say uh, for example I want to figure out uh, this point here, blue point. Though I know the label is blue, what class would a k nearest neighbor algorithm say this point belongs to? Say if I want to take k equal to 3 then basically I have to find 3 nearest points which are these 3. So, this is what is represented and since the majority is blue this will be um, uh, blue. So, basically if you think about it uh, this point would be classified correctly and so on. Now, even in the training set for example, if you take this red point uh, I know the label is red. However, if I were to run uh, k nearest neighbor with 3 data points. Uh, when you find the three closest point, they all belong to blue. So, this would be misclassified as blue even in the training data set. So, you notice one general principle is uh, there is a possibility of data points uh, getting misclassified only uh, in kind of uh, this region where uh, there is a mix of both of these data points. However, as you go farther away the chance of misclassification uh, keeps coming down. So, again uh, in, in some sense you see a parallel uh, saying okay, if I were to draw a line here and then say this is all red class, this is all blue class, then points around this line is where the problem is right. As they go farther away the problems are less. Nonetheless notice uh, how we have never defined uh, a boundary uh, line or a curve here at all. Right. The data points themselves uh, tell you how uh, this boundary is drawn. So, in that sense um, it is while it is simple it is also in some sense sophisticated because we never have to guess a boundary. The data points themselves define a boundary in some sense. So, I, I can actually effectively use this algorithm for um, complicated nonlinear boundaries which you would have to guess a priori if you were using a parametric approach. So, that is the key idea here. Uh, a similar illustration for k equal to 5. Now, if I want to um, let us say check uh, this data point from the training set itself, then I look at its 5 neighbors closest 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of them are red. So, this is classified as red and so on. So, this is uh, the basic idea. Now, you do not have to do anything uh, till you get a data point. So, you could verify how well the algorithm will do on the training set itself. Uh, however, if you give me a new test data here, so which is what is shown by this data point, then if you want to do a classification there is no label for this. <laughs> Remember the other red and blue data points already have a label uh, from prior knowledge. This does not have a label. So, I want to uh, find out a label for it. So, if I were to use k equal to 3, then for this data point I will find the 3 closest neighbors, they happen to be these 3 data points. Then I will notice that 2 out of these are red, so this point will get a label class 2. If on the other hand the test data point is here and you were using k equal to 5, then you will look at the 5 uh, closest neighbors to this point and then you see that 2 of them are class 2 and 3 are class 1. So, majority voting this will be put into class 1. So, you will get a label of class 1 for this data point. So, this is the basic idea of k nearest neighbor. So, very very simple. However, these are some of these uh, the things to consider uh, before applying k n. So, one has to choose uh, the number of neighbors uh, that one is going to use, uh, the value of k, whether it is 3, 5, 7, 9, whatever that is. And the results can quite significantly depend on uh, the parameter uh, that you choose, uh, particularly when you have noise in the data and that has to be taken into account. The other thing to keep in mind uh, when using k and n is that um, when you uh, do a distance uh, between uh, two data points x1 and x2 let us say and let us say there are n components in these. The distance metric will 
take all of these components into uh, picture. So, uh, since we are comparing distance, then that basically means every attribute for this data point and this data point, we are comparing uh, distances. Uh, the problem with this uh, is that if uh, for example, uh, there are a whole lot of attributes which actually are not at all important uh, from a classification viewpoint, uh, then what happens is uh, though they are not important from a classification viewpoint, they contribute in the distance measure. So, there is, there is a possibility of this uh, features actually uh, uh, kind of uh, spoiling the results. Um, in k nearest neighbor. So, it is important to pick features which are uh, which are of relevance in some sense. So, the distance metric uh, actually um, uses only features which will give it the discriminating uh, capacity. So, that is one thing to keep in mind. The other uh, the problem is uh, these are these are handleable. Uh, these are uh, rather easily handled, but these are things to keep in mind uh, when you look at these kinds of algorithms. And also, particularly this being the first course uh, on data science, I'm assuming for most of you, these are kinds of things that you might not have thought about before. So it's worthwhile uh, to kind of uh, think about this, uh, do some. Uh, mental experiments to see why uh, these kinds of things might be important and so on. Now, the other aspect is scaling. So, for example, if there are two attributes, let us say in data temperature and concentration and temperatures are in values of 100, concentrations are in values of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on. When you take a distance measure, uh, these numbers will dominate over this. So, it is always a good idea to scale your data. Uh, in some format before doing this distance. Otherwise, uh, while this might be an important variable from a classification viewpoint, it will never show up because uh, these numbers are bigger and they will simply dominate the small number. So, feature selection and scaling are things uh, to keep in mind. And the last thing is cursive dimensionality. So, I told you that um, uh, while um, this is a very nice algorithm. Uh, uh, to apply because there is not much uh, computation uh, that is done at the beginning itself. Uh, however, if you notice, um, if I get a test data point and I have to find let us say the 5 closest neighbor, there is no way in which uh, I can do this, uh, it looks like unless I calculate all the distances. So, that can become a, a serious problem if the number of data points in, in my database is very large. Let us say I have 10,000 uh, data points and let us assume that uh, I have uh, an algorithm k nearest neighbor algorithm with k equal to 5. So, really what I am looking for is finding 5 closest data points from this database to this data point. However, it looks like I have to calculate all the 10,000 distances and then sort them and then pick the top 5. So, in other words to get this top 5, I have to do so much work, right. So, there must be smarter ways of doing it, uh, but nonetheless one has to remember that with number of um, data points and number of uh, features, uh, one has to uh, think uh, how to apply this uh, algorithm uh, carefully. So, the best choice of k depends on the data and one general rule of thumb is uh, uh, if you use large values for k, then clearly you can see you are taking lot more neighbors. So, you are getting lot more information. So, the effect of noise on classification can become uh, less. However, um, if you take a large number of neighbors, then your decision boundaries are likely to become uh, less uh, crisp and more diffuse, right. So, because if let us say there are two classes like this, uh, then for this data point if you take a large number of neighbors, then you might uh, pick many neighbors from the other class also. So, that can make the, uh, the boundaries um, less crisp and more diffuse. On the flip, slide, flip side, if you use smaller values of k, then your algorithm is likely to be affected by noise and outliers. However, uh, your uh, decision boundaries uh, as a rule of thumb are likely to become crisper. So, this is these are some things to keep in mind and 
as I mentioned before, it is important to remove irrelevant features um, and scaling is also an important idea. So, if you choose your features carefully, then you would get better classification with KNN. So, with this, we come to an end of uh, this um, uh, lecture on uh, K nearest neighbors and uh, following this lecture, uh, there will be a case study uh, which will use K nearest neighbor uh, that will be taught by one of the teaching assistants and after that, uh, I will uh, teach uh, a lecture on uh, K means clustering. Uh, thank you and I look forward to seeing you again in a future lecture, thanks.